Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Pacers Gaming Podcast presented by Salesforce. We always leave a link in the description if you want to go check them out. A lot of actually career opportunities over at Salesforce, and they have a great marketing product that we actually use at the Pacers as well. In this video, we've got a couple things to hit on, Cody. Some league things, some 2K things, and we'll definitely look at the patch notes. So where do you want to start? Um, you want to start with the league? Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Let's do it. I had to turn you up a little bit in the, in the headphones, but I think we're ready to go. So first, guys, we'll update you on Pacers Gaming and our 2K League roster. Um, if you follow our team on social media, you might have seen that we made some protections this past week. And we announced that we will be protecting Wolf, Swizzerk, and Jomar for the expansion draft. So we can only protect up to three players before the expansion draft, which will come later this fall. And then we'll have the opportunity to retain an additional player. So we saw some comments um, on our community tab on YouTube after Spencer posted that graphic. But the answer is yes, we'll be able to, to retain one additional player um, if we so choose at that point. So uh, we, we have those guys coming back and we'll, we'll see what happens. A lot of decisions to be made going into this next season. Uh, I, I think you guys know, and Spencer and I have talked about it, it was unacceptable the way we finished. If you followed our team, we didn't have a great season. There were a lot of challenges, of course, with COVID and the like, but um, we're, we're looking forward to getting back on track season four and representing you guys, our fans and our community. So uh, stay tuned and a lot more information coming soon on that. For sure. And then uh, you told me you're going to hop into the park here after this. Yeah. You said maybe there's some, some logo things. <laughs> yeah. I woke up this morning to an email from the league saying that 2K League logos above our head are being implemented this afternoon into the park. So I'm hopping in with Jonah from Magic Gaming and, and Rudy from the Knicks. We're going to play some park. So if you find us there and you see the logos over our head, make sure you match up with us. It should be fun. And all the players across the 2K League will now have the 2K League logos in park as well. So you'll be able to identify your favorite players and run with them or, or play against them. So that, that starts today. The other piece that we can only slightly tease here, there may be some tournaments, a number of tournaments coming up to be on the watch for. Correct. Yeah. Like Spencer said, can't say too much yet, but you guys always ask for tournaments or if we're running things or if someone in the league is. And um, good thing is you might see some coming soon and there might be a lot of them. So if, if you like playing pro-am five on five, could be some three on three stuff this off season to run by the league or teams. Make sure you stay tuned. We'll be posting anything and everything about those tournaments where you can play, how to sign up. Uh, but a lot more information coming soon on that. If you had to make any recommendation to anyone out there who wants to make the league, would you recommend uh, getting into Pro-Am and five-on-five -five competitive play? Have to. I, I think uh, stage three-on-three -three comp and Pro-Am, even play now one-on-one -on -one or my team is fine. It's good, but there's no doubt in my mind the best 2K players in the world play Pro-Am. It's just the skill required, the understanding of the game, five-on-five uh, it's just a different level. So if you if you think you're the best or you want to try to become one of the best and make our league and make this a full-time job, start playing Pro-Am right now. And I, I think everybody has a shot to get in, especially this year without leaking too much. So yeah, Spencer, definitely play five on five. All right. So the reason everyone probably clicked on this video is we probably clickbaited something found in the patch notes. So we're going to go over the patch notes and, you know, speaking of understanding the game, we got to figure out what's changed, what's the same, what we need to look out for in 2K. So from a general standpoint, and we'll link the patch notes uh, down below as long as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as general fixes, a lot of little bugs, right? right. A lot of glitches, some readability things, player likeness, socks, not you know, <laughs> graphically representing correctly. The main one here though, Cody, I believe is the park dribble moves moving to L3 or a left stick click. Yeah, definitely. I think there've been some issues with the park dribble move so far this year. They've been, um, they haven't been able to be disabled 
from my understanding, I've, I'm playing center this year, so I haven't experienced it myself. But I've I've heard a lot from the the pro am community when they play park, they'll be dribbling in these park moves. You're doing the slip and slide from and one. Uh, you're the professor in the park when you're not trying to be. So uh, it looks like Mike Wayne moved it to L three, which is the left stick click. But players are still having an issue with that. Uh, so at least he's listening to feedback. Thank you, Mike. But it sounds like the players would just like it to be enabled or disabled. Um, so we'll see if he listens to that feedback. Hopefully. But yeah, that's what I've seen too. Just an option to turn it on or off. Exactly. Right? Yep. How simple. <laughs> right. You would think. You would think. Some things aren't as simple as they appear, but hopefully that <laughs> one does get changed so that the community is a little happier about it. Speaking of feedback from the community, the first one in the gameplay section of the patch notes, increasing the size of the shot meter. Yeah, I, I think that's a good one too. If you do play with the shot meter, it, it was difficult to see, especially, you know, everybody's playing on a different size monitor or, or TV and resolution can be different too, depending on the console you're playing on in your settings. So it, w- it was tough to see that green window. Sometimes it was really small over your head. And even if you were on the sidelines, sometimes it, you couldn't see it if it would go out of bounds. We had that issue in the league mode last year too. Um, so I, I think this is good. I'd love to hear what people say in the comments, if it's big enough or if, if this even matters for shooters, because a lot of people turn it off. Mm-hmm. But uh, at least they're listening again. Now, a couple things here, you know, there's always this this balance, this fight between a ball handler and guarding the ball, right? Yep. You know, where do, which side do you buff? Which side do you nerf? There's a couple things here that I think, they, like a couple give and takes. Mm-hmm. I see reduced first step acceleration, a.k.a. speed boost, out of certain dribble moves. I also see an uh, added the ability for more moves to yield ankle breaker, ankle breakers and defensive reactions. So that's a little give and take from the guard. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I, I believe we also see general improvements to defensive movement, including more responsive shifts, cuts, and stops. So what do you yeah. think about the balance between that, the ball handler and guarding the ball? Yeah, it, it sounds like they've shifted it shifted it more toward defense. So I think you mentioned the first step acceleration or speed boost has been slowed down out of moves. So that's toward the defense. And then also the last one, general improvements to defense, um, which was much needed, Spencer. It felt super delayed this year. When you move the stick, it would take forever to get in the direction you wanted to go to. Um, and, and that's why I think lockdown defenders haven't been as prevalent in this year's game because – you have the offense is so overpowered that uh, the defense really has no chance, even if you have badges as a lockdown. So people have been making offensive builds and maybe a three and D here and there sharp lock at the two or the three. Um, But the ankle breakers part does kind of swing it back the other way for those park guards when you're getting those dribble combos and um, really trying to break the ankles. If you have those badges, and, and I like that because I, I hadn't seen an ankle breaker at all up until this point in 2K21. So when I've been playing, I haven't seen it. I've heard a lot of people complaining about it, that the badge doesn't work. So uh, I, I think overall, it's, it's a great change. Uh, a, again, maybe our community thinks differently or you guys watching this video, let us know down in the comments. But I, I personally think it's it's a good change and a good reaction by 2K. And I think from what I saw, there was an earlier patch that maybe initiated ankle breakers. Um, I, I don't know. You guys stay stay tuned to like Mike Wang's tweets. He, he tends to give a little bit more detail on some of these patch notes. Let's you know when things are actually turned off or on or that they should be on as of a certain time today um, right. in case you're not seeing them, et cetera. Uh, another thing here that maybe affects you a little bit is improved responsiveness of shots coming from certain post moves. So I'm sure yeah. you haven't experienced it yet, maybe today when you when you hop on. But have you 
I mean, this is one thing in general and going back to our last point with the movement and the delay that maybe the next gen consoles, hopefully will get a lot more responsiveness mm-hmm. out of everything. But how do you feel about post moves? Anything you felt was lagging? Yeah, I could definitely tell a difference this year compared to 18 and 19 2k20 there wasn't a ton of mashing there were some post moves incorporated but in 18 and 19 man the post was you were either mashy or we saw ramo on our team season two who dominated on the post score in the league so this year interior scoring was definitely nerfed Uh, the contests have been crazy the intimidator badge is unbelievable and the post moves are irrelevant up until this point so i think this is a a really good decision by mike wang and the 2k team to to buff the post moves and like you said i haven't gotten to play with it yet but i'm I'm excited to see what i can do if i try to work out of the post you know have that drop stepper badge the post spin technician um maybe throw some hooks all all those things just to kind of see how it plays now but in in order to allow the big men to affect the game on the offensive end i think post moves definitely need to be uh buffed in 2k21 and hopefully this patch did it so a lot of the other uh, patch notes here, it's optimization, stability improvements, fixed an issue. A lot of these start with fixed an issue, fixed a <laughs> hang. You know, So there's just some slight difficulty tweaks when it comes to my team. But most things are just issues, bugs, um, some probably general cleanup of the code and the game itself. Uh, sure. But we, we we hit on you know what we think maybe affects gameplay and uh, you guys the most. Let us know what you think of these patch notes, and especially let us know what you think still needs patched in the Definitely. game. Anything else, Cody? Last thing I would say is I'm I'm excited that they're releasing these patch notes now. You know, in in the past they haven't done this, and I think there's been a ton of feedback from the community that we want to see what they're changing so we understand and we can kind of hold 2k accountable now and and know what they've changed and if they are listening to the community so i think this is a step in the right direction and looking forward to seeing what other changes they make going into next gen absolutely like we said comment below things you think uh could be better in the game or you want to see in next gen as well we appreciate everyone tuning in for this pacers gaming podcast presented by salesforce Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.